After another long wait, Wave 3 of the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass has finally been released. This brings over the Rock Cup, which consists of London Loop from Mario Kart Tour, Boo Lake from Mario Kart Super Circuit, Rock Rock Mountain from Mario Kart 7, and Maple Treeway from Mario Kart Wii. On top of those four, there's also the Moon Cup, consisting of Berlin Byways from Tour, Peach Gardens from DS, Merry Mountain from Tour, and Rainbow Road from Mario Kart 7. Welcome to another episode of Level by Level. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the eight tracks I just listed and analyzing them based on how fun they are, but more importantly, how good I think they are as retro tracks. While Nitro tracks pretty much just have the job of being fun and creative, retro tracks have the job of not only maintaining what made the original version of that track work, but also changing and adapting it to make the reintroduction of the track feel justified. So with that said, how do these eight tracks stack up to not only the rest of the tracks in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, but also the first and second wave of the Booster Course Pass? Will these tracks be on the same level as those, or will these be an overall upgrade or downgrade? That's what we're here to find out today. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, but with that said, let's jump right into our first track of the Rock Cup, London Loop. As always, we start off this wave with a tour track. Now, as I've said in previous episodes, I've barely played tours, so these tracks are essentially brand new to me. By this point, we have two very distinct categories for tour tracks, the city tracks based on real world locations and the other ones. London Loop of course falls into the real world category, even if many of us wish London weren't real. That means this of course has the gimmick of changing each lap, which I said previously is a fantastic idea to fit in all of the different variations of the map from Tor. But how well utilized is it in this course? Well, let's jump right into the track to find out. The first lap starts out with a- good god this map looks complicated. The first lap starts with a simple turn to the right, followed by a small area to get a few item boxes. This already has us passing by a few of the red arrow walls, so it's clear from the start just how many different routes this map is going to have. Speaking of which, after a few other turns, we get to our first split path that actually lets us choose which route to go down. If we go to the left, we get access to some extra item boxes, however, it comes at the cost of being slower than the right path. I think that's a very interesting dynamic, though it being at the start of the course does make it a bit less interesting, as generally I think it would be much more intense of a choice near the end of a race. Eventually, both pathways recombine and the racers come face to face with the first chain chomp of the track. He plays fairly well on this long turn. I like how he's also sort of an obstacle for those trying to take the shortcut, as they'll have to avoid him in order to use their mushrooms. I will I will say though, I do find this turn being just long enough for it to require two mushrooms instead of one is a bit annoying, but it is what it is. Then we get to a drawbridge and, okay I'm gonna be real, this might not be a fair comparison, but I can't help but feel a slight bit disappointed by this when comparing it to the massive drawbridge in Delfino Square. This drawbridge is fine, it's just not as exciting when you've played other tracks. Anyway, after a few more turns and a jump, we reach the end of lap 1. That's of course not the end of the track though, as lap 2 kicks off with the player going straight ahead into a small park area. There's another few chain chomps here, but otherwise it's pretty smooth sailing. Okay, I'm lying, I ran into the second chain jump like 4 trillion times during the time trial. Flying up these stairs is kind of fun, but after that there's a long stretch of the track before anything else interesting happens. There's not even any off-road to take a possible shortcut, so it feels really boring. If you watched the first episode of this Booster Course miniseries, then you know my main complaint with Tokyo Blur was that there were long stretches without anything fun. London Loop is sadly pretty guilty of this as well, and this long stretch is a clear example of that. In fact, this boring stretch lasts for pretty much the rest of the lap, so we can go ahead and just jump right into lap 3. This goes through the same route as the second lap for a little bit, though now all the chain chomps are loose to rampage across the track. I think this is a cute little change to spice up the final lap. Once you reach where the second chain chomp was though, the route changes to bring the racers to a small circle they can trick off of. From there, the racers take another turn into the ending segment from the first lap, which brings us to the end of the track. So overall, it's okay. The portions with the chain chomps are cool, but overall, I just don't find this as interesting as most of the other Tour City tracks. That's not to say it's bad, I just think there are far too many stretches of nothing going on in this level. So for me personally, I'm gonna place this track into C tier. Oh, and of course I have to mention the music. It's equally fine. I can't really describe it, but it sort of feels like it came from a Mario sports game rather than Mario Kart 8. It's not really something I'll listen to outside the game, but it's certainly not a bad piece. Alright, time for track number two, Boo Lake. Wait a minute. Something's not right. Toad Circuit was track number two for wave one. Mario Circuit three was number two for wave two. There's, there's no circuit track. We're, we're free. That's right, this is our first wave of DLC that doesn't have a single bad track choice. Yeah, sure, the last track was just okay, but it's still leagues above Toad Circuit and Mario Circuit three. Yeah, Boo Lake is probably the simplest track here, but simple is far from meaning bad. Now, one thing I didn't really touch on when covering London Loop was how changed the track was from the original, because after all, adapting a track into a new game is what a good retro track does. It wasn't very relevant for London Loop aside from the changing laps thing, but it's super noteworthy here. Super Circuit, the game this track is from, has all of its tracks be completely flat due to the hardware. With this track finally getting a modern remake though, the Y axis is finally well utilized. 
turns. We see this immediately after the first turn as we go across several jumps. That's just a small change compared to what we have coming up though. After a small split path, we see something I didn't think we were going to get in any of these tracks an anti-gravity section. Yes, Sky High Sunday had anti-gravity, but that was for the whole track, so it didn't really feel that special. Here, though, we have an actual dedicated anti-gravity portion for the first time in this entire DLC. I was super, super happy to see that. It's changes like this that make the retro tracks feel so much more fitting. After this anti-gravity turn, we get to dip into the water for the rest of the race. With underwater driving being added in Mario Kart 7, you weren't originally able to go into the wa- Wait, there's no water? Why the frick was this called Boo Lake? But yeah, this is a super obvious addition. Really happy they did this as it gives this track a really unique feel. You can even run into the fish bones. While under the water, the track is also not just flat, but each platform is angled, making it even more interesting to race on. There's also a small shortcut that can be performed with a mushroom, which was in the original too, but I like how it's both tilted and underwater. The track then ends with a bunch of steep jumps, which is just a really great way to end the track. You can even ride on the wall, which yeah, is probably useless, but hey, I like doing it and you're useless too, so how does that make you feel? So yeah, if it isn't obvious, I really like playing on this track. I'm not sure how controversial this opinion is, but it's definitely an A tier for me. The only thing keeping it down is the somewhat generic theming and the fact that it's simpler than the ones in S, but it does its theme and simplicity so well that it's honestly in contention for S tier. Oh, speaking of theme, I like this track's music. Not quite as much as Twisted Mansion, but it's still really nice. Honestly, I could see this track moving up on the tier list sometime in the future. Really, really happy with how this turned out. I honestly keep forgetting this next course is in the way. Not that it's bad, it's just always been sort of forgettable to me. The track is, of course, Rock Rock Mountain. This comes to us from Mario Kart 7, meaning there isn't as much to update, though they do surprisingly change a little bit here. First off, the track starts on the side of the mountain before bringing us into a small cave. Honestly, I wish there were more obstacles in the cave here. It feels a lot emptier when you compare it to, say, Choco Mountain's cave from the first wave. Once you break out of that cave, though, we get the main portion of the track, the gliding section. Or, well, the first. This says you glide over many pipes, allowing you to collect coins, but also get some boost from the wind blowing out of these pipes. You can stay in the air for a long time or land down on the ground immediately if you so choose. No matter what though, you won't be on the ground for long as you immediately get put into another glider section. This also gives us access to our first shortcut of the track, and this is honestly pretty fun to take. There's a ramp hidden in the off-road, so if you use a mushroom, you'll be able to jump right off of it straight to the mountain climb. If you have enough mushrooms or glide into the off-road just right though, you can even skip the ramp for an even tighter turn. It's a pretty big corner cut, so I enjoy taking it quite a bit. Then we get to the ending portion of the track, which is the climb up the mountain itself. This is actually the thing that received the major change in the track, as now it also features anti-gravity. Really happy that they're starting to make these retro tracks actually have features from the newer titles. The climb up the mountain is pretty straightforward, with a few dash panels and also rolling rocks along the way, which gives us an intense place to end the lap. After that, there's just one more glider ramp to the finish line, which fits perfectly, as this is a fairly glider-focused track. That's actually not the last thing I wanted to talk about layout-wise, though. Since you end the lap with the glider, for laps 2 and 3, you now have access to a few pipes off in the sky, which allow you to cut the first corner of the track. I always like shortcuts like this that carry over from the previous lap, but adds an extra layer of fun that I really appreciate. So with that said, I think this has earned a B tier. It doesn't really do anything exceptional, but there aren't really any negatives I have for the track either. It's probably the most basic track of the bunch here, which is why I struggle to remember it. As for the music though, it's easily the best of the three we've looked at so far. I could actually see myself listening to this outside the game, so that's gotta count for something. And ending off the Rock Cup, we have Maple Treeway. This has always been a pretty popular track, and for good reason. Aesthetically, this track is phenomenal. I've always loved fall settings, and this is one of the very few tracks to take place on one. Since we're already on the aesthetic, music here is a banger. This song has always been a classic, so I'm not surprised I love it here too. Anyway, to the actual layout of the track, and oops, right away we have our first shortcut. Instead of going straight ahead to the cannon, you can veer off to the side here with the mushroom. It's really satisfying to hold your drift the whole time here for a purple spark. Obviously, you can't technically take this until lap 2, but if you're in time trials, then the option is here. If you play through it normally though, we have a few turns that lead us into the iconic cannon shot into the tree. I've loved this moment in every iteration of this track. It's just so cool being able to burst through a bunch of leaves while flying over other trees. <laughs> Upon landing, we get to drive on the tree itself, which is covered in piles of leaves. This is always a really fun obstacle, because it will randomly spit out items onto the ground. It's always fun to try your hand at getting a mushroom to get a boost. After the first few piles, we cross over a bridge and then back onto another turn. This one is pretty easy to fall off on in 200cc, but I honestly kind of like that. It still feels pretty fun to make, unlike the ending one on Neo Bowser City. If you're able to survive that, then you're able to go into another iconic portion, the Wiggler area. I feel like it's way too easy to avoid them as of now, so maybe if there was a third Wiggler, that could make this a slight bit more intense. 
sense. After that, we go into a big tree lane with dash panels and a, a half pipe. Yeah, this is the first track in not only the DLC, but the entirety of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe to have a half pipe. But these have been missing since Mario Kart Wii, and honestly, I think that's a shame. It was a really fun feature. I was super excited and surprised to see them re-add half pipes, especially since it wasn't in the Mario Kart 7 version of this track. Going on to the half pipe is just as fun as it used to be. Really, really happy they kept this from the original. From there, the rest of the track is mostly straightforward. The funny bridge is sadly not here again, but the glider ramp is fine. The ending is three split paths where you can either go to some dash panels or go straight to trick off some routes. And with that, the course finally comes to an end. Once again, another great track. Maybe that's just my fall bias speaking, but I'll never not love this one. The reintroduction of half pipes is huge as well. Honestly, placing this on the tier list was tricky. While I do think I personally like playing on Boo Lake more, Maple Tree Way is probably worth putting into S tier for both its lack of flaws and reintroduction of an important track piece. Most people probably like Maple Tree Way better anyway, so I'm sure this won't be controversial. It's the lowest of the S tiers, but still, I would say it's deserving of being there. But now it's time for the cup I was looking forward to the most. The one based on my favorite game of all time, the Moon Cup. Let's see, does this start as strong as Mario Odyssey does? Uh... Berlin Byways is another tour track, which means you already know the gimmick, so let's go ahead and jump right in. Immediately out of the gate, we're able to find out the main addition to this track, the cars. Now, there are already quite a few tracks in the game that have cars, so this has a bit of competition in that aspect. After a few turns, we get into a small station where we can either go inside the train to get an item box or just ride outside. Getting out of the train smoothly, though, is really hard for me personally, so I'm just gonna stick to the outside. After leaving the station, we come to a neat bit here with a double-layered road, one high and one low. I prefer sticking up high to get the coins, but the low road is good for tighter turns. That then brings us to the end of lap one, but of course, this is a tour track, that's not where this ends. Right away, we see our first change with the glider ramp being here for the opening portion. It's kind of fun to glide over all the cars, I'll give it that. After that, though, we run into the boring curse of many of these tour tracks. We have a long stretch here that is just a normal road. Yeah, the cars are there, but they're spread out enough to make them easy to avoid. The only mildly interesting thing is a transition into a park section, but even then, that's like 30 seconds of driving later, and it barely qualifies as exciting. I do really like the ending of lap too, though, having you cross back around to the road you've already drove on. Depending on where you are in the race, you can even run into people that are behind you. The thorns here as well are really well placed. They completely fill the path, so you have to choose to go under one. It feels really claustrophobic, which makes this super nerve-wracking for the end of a lap. So yeah, definitely a fan of how this lap ends. We still have one more lap to look at though, lap 3, which is what finally brings us to the Womps. These are really funny because for some reason they act as ramps, so you can just go flying off of them. From there we get a mini split path at the underside of the bridge giving us some boost panels. Also I did not go the wrong way on my first playthrough, shut up. From there it's just a bunch of stuff we've already seen, so that concludes Berlin Byways. While the Thwomps and Womps were both really fun, that's basically all this track has. That especially sucks considering how long this thing is. It feels like such a drag to get through the second lap. I was genuinely pretty bored for most of this one. Maybe it'll grow on me the more I play on it, but if I want to play on a car map, I'll just do Shroom Ridge. This is my least favorite track of this wave, so it's also getting a C tier. London Loop is just barely better. As for the song, I just think it's alright. It's a bit slow to start, but once it does get going, I like it a good amount. Probably better than London Loop's theme, but overall, not really my favorite. And for the track I was the most familiar with before this wave, we have Peach Gardens. Much like Calamari Desert from Wave 2, this got a surprising amount updated about it, so let's jump right into it. The first and second lap go exactly how you would expect for a race on Peach Gardens to go. You start by going across a bridge to get to the garden itself. This large patch of flowers is really fun to cut through with a mushroom. One small, tiny disappointment though, I kind of miss there being a random patch of flowers here. I'm not sure why, but I always like cutting the corner of these while I race. It's stupid, I know, but I was a little sad about that being cut. Then we get to the iconic section filled with hedges, and wow, this is a massive improvement. In the original, these hedges were just sort of thick cubes, which certainly worked, but now they're actually designed after characters in the Mario series. This makes this segment look a lot nicer, and I really appreciate that. Following the hedge maze, though, we have a change I'm a bit more iffy about. In the new version, there's a giant piranha plant in the circular area, but in the original, there were three more hedges and some item boxes. I think I might prefer the original, since driving around through the hedges was a bit more interesting, but the piranha plant here isn't bad. After the plant, we run into a few moles, who have now been given the digging effect from Mario Kart 8. This would normally be the end of this segment, however, like I said, this was one of the tracks to get an added route, this time on the last lap. Once you start lap 3, after crossing the bridge, the racers have to take a left turn instead of a right, which takes them to a never-before-seen section of the track. Taking this path allows us to race on the course backwards, which is always just a lot of fun. It's always cool to get a new perspective on these old tracks, which makes this a super interesting gimmick. The hedges part even gains a brand new glider ramp to allow players to glide over the maze. I also just like the detail that the Luigi hedge is facing toward the glider ramp. Hello, Mario. There's not really much else to say other than, yeah, I'm really
really happy they decided to throw in the backwards route. So overall, while there are a few small changes I'm a bit sad about, this is my favorite track we've talked about so far. It easily deserves this spot in S tier. The changes for the most part are fantastic, and this was already one of my favorites from Mario Kart DS. Oh, and the song is great too. Not as good as Maple Treeway, but a banger regardless. This is actually our first wave to not end on the non-city tour track. Merry Mountain is another snowy mountain track, which is a dangerous thing to add into a game with Mount Wario, possibly the greatest track in the series. Luckily, this does have a pretty unique Christmas theming to go along with it, making it feel pretty distinct. And this is of course the perfect time to release it because Christmas! As this is not a city tour track, the three laps remain the same throughout for the most part. Let's go ahead and jump right into the layout. Immediately after the first turn, we run into a split path. We can either stick to the ground or go on the train tracks. I believe the train tracks are a bit faster, but they're also a bit riskier, giving this a nice risk-reward balance. I prefer going on the tracks personally, but the bottom path is nice to have in case the rails get too crowded or something. Afterwards, we reach a bridge that takes us to another jump. That brings us to another anti-gravity segment, but even more surprisingly, there's another half pipe. It's super great to see that this new mechanic won't be stuck to just Maple Treeway. Before that half pipe though, we have an opportunity to cut out this massive turn with a mushroom. This saves a ton of time and feels super satisfying to pull off. Our last stretch before the end has this race down the mountain, and honestly, I don't like this part. Everything up until right here was really good, but there's just nothing on this slope. That's not even an exaggeration, the only thing here are these boosters, no obstacles. This is easily the most boring part of any track we've talked about today. It takes up quite a big chunk of this track as well, making this track as a whole feel a bit underwhelming. I mean, just having Snowman or something here would have made this a bit more interesting, but no, it's just a straight shot to the goal. On the plus side, a glider ramp appears after the first lap, in 150cc, for some reason it doesn't appear until lap 3 in 200cc, but yeah, kinda sucks to end the track like that after I was enjoying the rest of it, but that's just how it is I guess. I think B tier just below Rock Rock Mountain makes sense. While the ending is pretty lame, the rest of the track is really fun, so I can't really say I don't like this as a whole. Considering they did update the cars in Coconut Mall, I'm not going to give up hope entirely that they add some enemies here in the future. Oh, but of course I can't forget the song, I actually quite like this one, it fits with the Christmas aesthetic perfectly. But now, we have finally made it. The last track of Wave 3 of the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass. That track is Rainbow Road from Mario Kart 7. Gee, I wonder what tier this will be in. Okay, yeah, we all already know this track is phenomenal. It's one of the best tracks in the series, period. Before we get to the layouts, I really quickly just want to praise the aesthetic once again. The road here is given a really unique look that I'm a massive fan of. It's honestly amazing how they were able to make all four rainbow roads in this game look so visually distinct from each other. This is definitely right next to Waluigi Pinball, it's one of the best looking tracks in this DLC. But enough about looks, let's get to the layout. One of the main reasons people love this track so much is because it's one of the few that split into sections rather than laps. Unlike N64 Rainbow Road, which was split up after originally being three full laps, Mario Kart 7 Rainbow Road was designed around having these different sections. The first one starts simple with giving the player some item boxes after a turn. I do want to point out that this is one of only three sections on this course to have guardrails. I love that so much because Rainbow Road is supposed to be hard, so having railings defeats that purpose a bit. I think they're here to just give the player a small introduction to the course, that way they don't fall off too quickly. Once the guardrails go away, we're then tasked with jumping across a few small Rainbow Road segments, which really makes you feel like you're flying through space. Then we get to go through a really fun section, which has this jump between more road segments, but this time they're wrapped around a planet as if it's the planet's ring. Canceling a drift to trick at just the right moment is a blast. It feels great to go through this section every race. Once we land back on the road, after the final ring segment, we get to bounce on a mushroom. Really random inclusion, but I like doing it so I won't complain. That brings us to the end of section 1, already off to an incredible start. Section 2 gives us the first glider ramp of the track, which once again helps with the feeling of flying through space. This lands us on not a rainbow road, but actually a planetary ring, which is super fun to hold a drift on. The boost panels giving extra speed makes this even more fun. Once we're ready to leave the rings, we get ourselves another glider ramp to jump back onto the rainbow road itself. I really cannot stress enough how cool it feels to basically be jumping around to different planets during the course. On this Rainbow Road segment, there are a bunch of boost panels, which I really like once again, as it actually feels risky going for them without there being any railings to save you from falling. That brings us to a bit of a Rainbow Road classic at this point, the Wavy Road. I've always loved this gimmick, as it's fun to see just how many tricks you can do. Plus, there are holes that contain item boxes punched out of the road here, making it a nice challenge to try and grab one. Once the player reaches the end of the Rainbow Road here, we then get to land on a moon. 
Additionally, the section now has anti-gravity applied to it, being a very natural and great change with Mario Kart 8's mechanics. There's a few chain chomps bouncing around here, which can sometimes be a bit tricky to dodge. That means it's like the third track this wave to have chain chomp. Tricking off the moon craters is a lot of fun as you're able to collect coins and items. Finally though, section 2 comes to an end. Yeah, they sure squeezed a lot into that one. We've still got section 3 to cover though, so let's jump right into that. Immediately, a brand new course element is introduced, being these mini rainbow conveyors. Obviously, these will boost anyone on top of them forward, adding a bit of extra depth as to where the best place to drive is. The conveyors lead the racers to one of the weirdest, but still one of the coolest sections in any rainbow road, the spinning cylinder. There's nothing like this on any other Mario Kart track, which makes this one really stick with you. It's filled with boost panels, so trying to hit as many as possible is very entertaining. Once the tunnel finally ends, we get the option to either glide or stick to the ground. Personally, I prefer the air. If you do take the glider, then you'll have to fly through several rings to get speed boosts. Alternatively, being on the ground will require the player to make several jumps with boost panels. Finally, both of these paths recombine for one last turn, but they couldn't make it just any turn. This one is extremely wonky, being at a super unique angle upwards that reminds me a lot of the anti-gravity section on Mario Circuit. Seeing that turn coming up was a really cool visual. Love that they decided to even make this simple turn a fun one. But with that, there's just one more jump, and the track is finally completed. What an experience. This is the best Rainbow Road. There's no doubt in my mind anymore. Yeah, I played it all those years ago on the 3DS, but finally getting to play it on the big screen made a huge difference. The track feels like an actual journey through space. It just feels magical. The only other track in the Mario Kart series that feels like a journey as much as this one is Mount Wario, which as I said, is my literal favorite track. Oh, and how could I forget the music? Man, it's fantastic. I'm not 100% sure yet, but I think it might be my favorite Rainbow Road theme yet. The way that the N64 motif plays on the last lap is so good. Like, just take a listen. They did pretty much everything perfectly here, so yeah, it's the best track of the Booster Course Pass. I love Ninja Hideaway, but 3DS Rainbow Road is just something else. It's going to be really hard to top this. But anyways, that's not actually the end. While there aren't any more tracks to talk about, there are three interesting things that came with them that I won't have the chance to talk about in another video. First off, they nerfed Waluigi and the Wiggler, good. The other two changes are much more gameplay related. First off, the smaller of the two, getting struck by lightning no longer takes you out of your glider. I know I said this is smaller, but this is a fantastic change. It's funny too, cause I just complained about this happening in my Mario Kart 8 Deluxe nitpicks video with this clip of my dad striking me with lightning. But the other change is actually massive. You can now play with custom item rules just like in Smash Bros. Now if you want to play with literally only blue shells, you can. This is something I really never thought they would add, but it's so, so cool that they did. It's funny too, because I just complained about this in my Mario Kart 8 Deluxe nitpicks video. Huh. But yeah, it's super cool to see them actually go back and update the game without them necessarily needing to. I'm really looking forward to see if we get more small updates like this in the future. But anyways, that's it for this video. Do you all hate me for not mentioning that you can use a mushroom a few times on Berlin Byways, thus making it the most exciting track of all time? Let me know in the comments. This wave of tracks was absolutely phenomenal. Overall, I think it's easily the best. Not sure how they could go up from here, but I'm really curious to see what they do for waves 4, 5, and 6. But anyways, dry bones for Smash, and I'll see you guys next time.